when is the appropriate time to actually to start dreaming about what's next? It could be August, but it could be January, <laughs> right? Yeah, for me, I always think about what's next around my birthday. That's like my New Year's. It's like, okay, where have I been? Where am I going? And for me personally, by the time this airs, I'll be 40 years old. But Woo! yeah, but today I have one more month. Welcome to the 40 Club. I know, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I actually am really excited about it. I feel like my friend just turned 40 yesterday and she, on her birthday card, I put 40 is a new 25 with no chill because she just like does not care about anything. And I remember when I, in my 30s, I felt like I realized things didn't matter as much as they did in my 20s. And then, 40s, it's like, no, actually, nobody cares. <laughs> so I don't know, Rosa, you might have to like tell us what it's like in the next decade. Oh, I might, I might. Even though everyone thinks you're younger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because I'm 25. I'm mm -hmm. actually 25. There you go. <laughs> there you go. But you know what? I'm always thinking about what's next. That's just kind of the way that I'm wired. I'm like, hey, what's next? What, what do I got to be thinking of? What, what am I doing tomorrow? What am I doing next year? Uh, so I agree with Rosa. I don't know that there is a wrong time to think about what's next. So happy new year, everybody. Let's talk about what's next. <laughs> remember um, when I went to, I think I said this, when I went to my dentist a while back, I, I can't remember why he said this, but that really stuck with me is tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life. So every tomorrow can be new year. It can be what's next. So it's how really, what is, how are you, your mindset is prone to thinking about possibility beyond where you are at today. So there you go. You know, it's funny because I think about it like today's one less day that I'm that I'm here to get done everything that I got to get done. So I think of it a little bit different instead of tomorrow is the nice. I just think, hey, this is one, le one less day that I have. So I need to get going if I want my dreams to come true. Well, let me introduce us. We're all, what I love about today is we're all big dreamers. We all love to look at the possibilities. We all know that every day is a new day to begin. So my co-hosts today are Dr. Madadi Simeon. She is an HR executive and motivational speaker. Welcome, Madadi. Today, she's wearing white and silver sparkles and uh, her daughter's tiara. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have Rosa Santos, HR executive and leadership expert. And today she is wearing beautiful puff white sleeves and a gorgeous silver ball necklace. So we're all going to the ball today. And I am Elisa Monjadas. I'm a vision producer and executive coach at the Happy Cactus. And I have my black sparkles and my snowflake necklace today. Welcome everyone to the What Rules podcast. We're talking today about breaking the rules for your own career, breaking the rules for yourself, breaking the rules of your mind, breaking the rules from your past, breaking the rules from what other people think that you should be doing. We're, we're against all that because, you know, we're all... We're all grown now, <laughs> now that it's 2022. <laughs> but you know what? The road to career success and happiness starts with having big dreams. And today's speaker dreamed of scientific discoveries, working on Broadway, and saving the world. And all of those big dreams have actually come true. Madeline Mackey is a published biochemistry researcher, has worked at four Tony Award-winning theaters and responded to disasters all over the country as an officer with the American Red Cross. We are so excited to have her here today. So here to help us activate our own career dreams, please join me in welcoming Madeline Mackey. 
Thank you, Elisa. I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to activate career dreams while wearing a tiara. That does not Yes, I was just going to say, tell us what you're wearing today. (laughs) (laughs) We're wearing a burgundy sheer top with a very double tier sparkly tiara. Yes. I love that you call yourself a career activator. I don't I don't know if you've taken the strengths finder or if that's mm-hmm. where that came from, but activator is my number three. I'm pretty sure activator is one of Dr. Medati's top ones because she actually has a conference called Activate. So we're all in this realm together. So where did that come from? It took me 48 years to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. So as you told your audience, I was a published biochemistry researcher. After I wrote my first paper, my mentors and advisors looked at me and said, wow, this is great. What are you going to do next? And I looked at them and said, not this. This is not what I'm going to (laughs) spend the next 40 years of my life doing. Uh, My true love and passion was the stage. And everyone around me kept saying, you'll never make a living at theater. You're going to be waiting tables and sleeping on your parents' couch for the rest of your life. And being a stubborn and naive 20-year-old, I went and did it anyway. Now, one of the things in theater, that's where I first learned to activate, is in theater, you're laid off every eight weeks. So every time a show opens, a show closes, and you have to reactivate your career because the rent is activated every single month. (laughs) So after 15 years in theater, I got a little burnt out, a little jaded, and I wanted to activate a new career. I was a volunteer at the Red Cross, and I just said, I wonder if they will hire me. And I went and activated my network. And sure enough, they hired me. It took some convincing, but they activated me. They hired me as a program manager. And within 18 months, I was promoted to an officer position in charge of a six-county Bay Area region and a $3.5 million budget. And people used to just always ask me, how did you go from the lab to the stage to the C-suite? And I was like, I have a system. Let me show you my system. And my system is based on do three things at a time. One, two, three. When you do those three things, let's do three other things. And so it just came really natural that we're going to go and activate other people's career dreams. I'm just thinking, huh, what if I had done that? (laughs) You're making me rethink all the choices that I've made. (laughs) You're right where you're supposed to be. Yeah, which is a good thing. Hey, it is a good thing just to revisit, right? Revisit your decision-making patterns, your, your dreams, and the how you go about actually making those dreams reality. It seems to me, I'm reading between the lines that at those moments, you were really clear as to what you wanted and how to get it. My curiosity is around what happens in between those moments. Fear. <laughs> <laughs> we can end the podcast. I'm sorry, Rosa, I interrupted you. How do you get no, to no, those? No, no, Go no. Ahead. I think we should leave it now. I'll leave it. It was great. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> no, I'd say those. I mean, and that's the challenge, right? When you're lost and you're confused, and you're scared, and you're worried, and eventually you get to a point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, And I I remember in school, uh, in college, I had just published the paper. I was doing a second internship um, and fellowship in biochemistry, and I I was just lying in bed staring at the ceiling, crying my eyes out saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I hate this. And I was like, what if I changed my major right now? What would happen? And I jumped out of bed and I'm going to, I'm going to age myself, date myself a little bit here. And I pulled out the course catalog booklet. I did not (laughs) look it up online and opened up the booklet and looked and saw what would happen if I changed my major and realized I could still graduate in a year and a half, but I would have to activate that day. It would have to change. I could not take one more science course. I would have to flip majors. And that was like, well, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it. So, you know, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of confusion, but we all reach a point, I think, that you get sick and tired of being sick and tired and say, what if? What if I do this one thing? What would happen? We have a a guest that we've had on our podcast who came on and said, why not? And so it's really interesting to think about how these really simple questions can change your life. What if 
and why not? And then what happens next? <laughs> yes. Then then we have to activate. One, two, three. You pick the, what's the, you know, and I love it. They People say, what's the first step? Right. A lot of people worry about, well, I have to like if I'm starting a business, I'm going to have to get a website. I'm going to have to get clients. I'm going to have to pay my bills. Let's let's back up. Let's what's the very first thing you have to do for that business? Is it do you have to build a website or you have to get a business license? Um, do you got to get a tax ID number? What is the one thing you have to do right now? Maybe it's just I need to go get my application for grad school. Doesn't mean I'm going to apply but I'm going to go get the application. That's the what's next. And then it's it breaking it down into those smaller steps makes it a lot easier to digest the whole elephant. You know, that old joke and saying of how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Right. How do you activate your careers, your business, your book, your life? One step at a time. And, and, and I tell you, I think what I like about the what if versus the why not is because before you get to the why not, you need to ask, that what if question so you can really think through options, Mm -hmm. right? It's a very simple way of starting a question, but it opens up a whole fan of possibilities that you can think through, right? And then you can really, to your point, um, the small bites, the small chunk, chunk it, and then you can then, okay, why not this one? Why not this one? Why not this one? So it's a very straightforward forward way to train your mind to think differently. And sometimes to your point, it's fear, but also that helps you calm yourself, that anxiety down a little bit as well, right? And take control of, of the path that you want to take forward. Absolutely. I think it's like a spark like you're lighting a match. It's turning on the light from the darkness saying, what's out there? In your experience, do you think that will, would have helped you in the past take a step forward sooner instead of waiting to be sick and tired of sick and tired? Because I, I, I agree with you. Like a lot of the times I'm sick and tired, sick and tired. So I'm going to do something different. I think that's normal for a lot of people, but what are your thoughts on how do we activate sooner so that we're not at a point where you're sick and tired and you've gone through all that stress and suffering and tears and all that, all those things that we have to go through? I think it's just really important for us to spend time figuring out what we want to really spend that time in reflection rather than we're always doing, we always have a to-do list. We're always moving, 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 but sometimes it's important to stop and do that reflection. I think if in college, if I had stopped a lot sooner to reflect rather than, okay, what's the next class I have to sign up for? What's the next semester? What's the next internship? Instead of just saying, let's stop. Let's stop. And that's literally what happened to me, actually, is my father passed away in college and that forced everything to stop. And I told my mom, I said, I can't go back. I'm not ready to do a chemistry load again. And she says, you know, I understand. Let's take a break. Let's get some therapy. Let's breathe and then figure out what's next. And what's next, she said, why don't you just take some courses that you would enjoy? And I took a bunch of theater courses and that opened up the what if. But I don't think that would have happened if I didn't stop. So I encourage everyone, every, you know, every quarter, the first of the month, you know, sit down and say, what do I want this month to look like? What do I want this year to look like? And really keep that in in front of your mind. You know, it's January that the listeners are hearing about this and people talk about New Year's resolutions. And I know some people are for and against it or doing a vision board. This is a big time for vision boards. And what happens is we do that, we get so excited. And then we put the vision board up on the wall. And then by February, the vision board has fallen off the wall and we don't see it anymore. But what if every single month we looked at that vision? If we said, am I taking the steps I need to get towards that vision? And we looked at it every single month. I think that would help with waiting till we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
And that applies to life, too. I mean, it doesn't have to be this huge vision to change the world. It can literally be the vision that you have for your home, for your Mm -hmm. family, for your finances, for how you develop personally and professionally. Those taking a look at your level of satisfaction in each level and then seeing, I I like to do this thing called a balance wheel with with my clients. It's like a pizza, right? And you Mm -hmm. break the pizza up into all these different categories, home, life, career, fun, love, all that kind of stuff. And then you you choose a rating and then you say, well, how satisfied am I in these areas? And then that's where you see if you need to tweak something or you look to see where you want to make changes or it's where you can celebrate like, wow, I love my house. Like it looks, I finally decorated it. Like it finally feels like home. Like I'm going to give myself a 10 and celebrate that. And maybe I'll have a party. (laughs) I love that you build in the celebration, that celebration is so important. Yeah. And I think we forget this is going to be our third year in COVID, I think, right? And I feel how all that we learned from the first months in lockdown and COVID and what I thought was going to be, oh, the world is going to be so different. I I feel, I don't know if you guys feel the same, but I feel that we've gone back to some of the prior to COVID kind of ways of being, if for lack of a better way of addressing that. And we have forgotten the small things that that make you happy or or to take those moments that in fact, while we were in COVID, we all seem to be so grateful for and helped us in many ways connect and relate to others differently. And and to your point, Alisa, celebrate things that that before you hadn't even noticed that that were part of your rearm or worth or worth celebrating. So as we face the new year, how should we think about not just the fact of dreaming, but really showing up maybe differently and just not just for others, for but for yourself? Because I, what I am thinking is coming out of like a major crisis is always innovation and opportunity and creativity because as to your point there's a jolt there that you you cannot escape but when you're in this kind of the sick and tired of sick and tired is is a bit more challenging so as we're still on this kind of I don't know, blur of being in COVID, but but going it's it's a bit of a hybrid mode of prior to COVID, but it's still in COVID. How do you jolt yourself to create that space of that mental bandwidth to then being able to go into the what if? For me, I go back to the things that I enjoy, but honestly, you know, one of the things that I learned. Uh, a while ago, is that energy comes from four main sources in humans, right? It's the body, the emotions, the mind, and the spirit. And even when there's nothing negative going on, I try to my best to protect that. And how my energy comes forward, how am I spending my energy is really the way that I look at it. A lot of a lot of people always talk about, hey, time, time, time. And I'm like, time, time is there, is how I spend my energy during that time. So for me, and I know we talk about this all the time is I, I, you know, I exercise, I I have to, even my family calls me out, like, go run, go do something. (laughs) They can tell when you need it. (laughs) Yeah, They can tell when I need it, you know, from a mental perspective, I do not speak negative. And when I do, my family corrects me and I try to avoid being around negative people. Now, Some of them are family members. Some of them, you know, you can't escape them because you work with them. But, you know, I try to make sure that that I do that. And then from an emotional perspective, honestly, as tired as I am, sometimes on the weekends, even though I have to, like last weekend, I was all weekend in a soccer tournament, you know, just to see my daughter and her emotions and how happy she is, I try to go dig into that. And then, you know, spiritually, everybody knows, you know, <laughs> on the program that I, that I have strong faith. But I try to feed those because right now I'm really blessed. Right now things are going well, mm-hmm. but I, I want to make sure that I keep that energy going so that I continue to think, okay, what's next? Let me not wait till something bad happens. Um, that's not to say nothing won't, but at the end of the day, that's how I do it. And that's how I stay motivated and kind of protect 
the energy um, that I have so that I can carry out positive energy for others. I've been feeling like kind of not bad, but not amazing lately. And I've been kind of, I've been asking myself, one of my, one of my good friends is a coach and we always ask like, what do you want? And, you know, like Madeline saying, know what you want. And I've been saying, I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know. And, um, I was like, well, what should I do about this? Like, how do I get out of my, it's not a funk. It's just not all of me. I I just don't feel like I'm all there. And I, I started thinking like, well, should I, get therapy. And I, I I really thought about it. Like, am I in a place where I, I just need therapy? And then I was like asking myself a bunch of questions and I was like, I'm not depressed. Like, I don't know. I just need like, a, I need like that jolt. And so I just hired a, a high performance coach and it's basically life coaching. It's, it's like, basic. I'm friends with and I hang out with a lot of these deep coaches and I'm all about let's work on your big vision, but I needed someone to help remind me of the things that you're talking about Dr. Madati like okay, well let's talk about your health. Where are you at with it? And okay, let's set like a really tiny goal like just making sure you move for 30 minutes a day. And honestly, I was I've been at the place where I need someone to just remind me of the basics to kind of like get back to myself. I think you just hit on it, Elisa, finding someone else to help jolt you. So, a therapist, a coach, you know, those, they, they'll, that's their job. They'll keep asking those questions, those tough questions that make you go, hmm, I've never thought about that. Um, or another option is take on a crazy BHAG challenge, right? A big, hairy, audacious goal. So a jolt that totally impacted my whole life that I never thought would ever happen. I decided to be a triathlete. And I made this decision when the furthest I had ever run was to the corner to catch the bus <laughs> and I didn't swim and I didn't have a bike, but I said, I'm going to be, I'm going to go be a triathlete. And not only am I going to be a triathlete, but I'm going to do a half Ironman race. I love hearing you say half Ironman race while you're wearing a tiara, by the way. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> And it did. It started with walking. Like that, that, that was a jolt. Making that decision that I'm going to pursue this goal. It's a two year goal because um, of the shape I was in. I wasn't going to get off the couch and just jump into the Pacific Ocean and and swim 1.2 miles. Um, instead, it started with walking. Walking 10,000 steps. And I set another goal of I'm going to do it for 100 days. And then all of a sudden, that changed my whole life because when I set that goal, the walking became a priority. Right? It became I've got to get this done, just like Dr. Marari says of, of doing her workout, like she's going to do her workout and that's a priority. So, you know, I set up the calendar and I did as the old school, the, the gold star chart and gave myself a gold star for every day. And you suddenly have a streak and I didn't want to break the streak. And the next thing you know, I had 100 days, then 200 days, and I did a 5K and then a 10K and then a half marathon. I learned to swim. I got a bike. I learned to bike. I spent a lot of money on biking and all the equipment (laughs) that goes with it. And um, it totally changed my life. Now, with the half Ironman, um, I ended up doing it as a relay team, which was a lot of fun. And it's still on the it's still on the list of we have to go and accomplish this goal. But just setting that goal, setting that goal impacted my discipline, my focus, my health, my business, my relationships. It have impacted everything. So sometimes to jolt ourselves, we have to think about something of what if I do something that I have never, ever thought I could ever do? Let's see what would happen. It's so interesting you say that because I volunteer for an organization on their board. It's called Back on My Feet. And what we do is we fight homelessness. And the way that they do it is through um, physical exercise, right? So it's actually walking. So they walk with us. They need to start walking with us for 30 days. Once they do that for 30 days, then the organization, I mean, you can see it. You can see the change in them because they're winning. They just walked. Like you said, they used to just walked, you know, (laughs) to, to the corner and now they're actually walking a mile and we get members that are in no shape at all. And now they are 
they they're finally getting their own apartment. We support them get the get a job. We train them on job on um, you know on interviewing and a whole bunch of things. And we have, I mean, I'm sure there's many organizations, but what I know from this is the highest, what I call retention rate as far as success. 90% of them still have jobs and we stay in contact with them. And it all started for something so basic, walking. That was the only commitment that they had, walking. And we've had members graduate and it's just amazing. It's just gets me so excited every time I see one of our members just um, reach a milestone because it it's sometimes those basic things in life, like our health, that we need to protect mm-hmm. so that we can enjoy the fruits of our labor. That's so cool. Back on my feet. It's national. If you don't know it, look it up, support it. I love what you guys are saying because it's how do you get to know yourself and have this self-awareness of what you're at so you can make choices to change that course, right? And if you're at a point where, as you Mirari said, I'm good, things are good, but I need to make sure that they continue to be good, right? And sustain what I have because I've worked really hard for that. And if you get to a point where you don't feel that way, that then you can, you know, have that spark in some way because we know there is, empirical evidence (laughs) that doing this kind of thing really changes, really Mm -hmm. changes you, yourself as a human being, but also the impact that you can have on on others and how we engage and and whatnot. So that idea, Madeleine, of give yourself a goal completely uh, outrageous, (laughs) even if you didn't think that it was possible for yourself, that is going to do wonders to your how your brain develops and, and, and what that means in terms of um, your energy to your point, Mirari. I love, I love that. Well, and you know I, what you were saying, Rosa, it's true. There is, we are always training our brains, right? We have all these neural pathways mm-hmm. that are, we f- might feel are set in stone, but they're actually not. And so when you can do something like a big, hairy, audacious goal and say, I'm used to not walking at all to I'm going to be in a triathlon and do Ironman, that trains your brain to show you that you actually can do big things. You can do hard things. You can do big things. You can do things that seem impossible. And so All of that comes back to the decisions that you make and the way you think about your career and the possibilities that are there. Even if you're just not sure if you can get that, maybe it's a really tiny promotion that you're going after. If you haven't looked at other areas of your life where you can improve in small increments, it's going to be really hard to see that you might be able to improve in your career as well. I love that, Alisa, because sometimes we're just so focused on our career that we forget that we are more than a title, that we're more than a career. And um, Madeline, I don't know how to swim. I'm going to (laughs) start. There you go. She said it here, folks. She's going (laughs) to learn how to start. I went to one of those kiddie children's pool training places um, and hired, you can get one-on-one private lessons. And, you know, it was a four-foot pool. And I was like, let's do this. And it was funny because they were like, okay, today you're going to be a tadpole. <laughs> and <I was> like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I, Elisa, you're so right that sometimes to, we think about that promotion in our career and it's overwhelming, right? It's absolutely overwhelming. But let's do something a little closer to home. Maybe it's clean our house. Maybe it's paint the bedroom. Maybe it's learn a new skill or a new craft. And that gives us confidence. And that confidence then carries over into the rest of your life. That you think, well, you know what? I did renovate my house. And I also learned how to do something I didn't know how to do. Maybe I can go and get this promotion. So it's all interconnected, everything in your life. And from your health, your environment, your relationships, your career, you know, if one of those things are off, all of them can go off. And if one of those things you're excelling at, then it carries over that old saying of a rising tide raises all ships. So if your career is struggling, it's okay. Stop. Breathe. Don't don't focus on the career. Let's focus on something we can control. And then once we get control of something, then that's going to carry over in the rest of our lives. Want 
to know how breaking the rules can help you level up your career game? Search What Rules Podcast on any social media platform and join our members only group on LinkedIn, where we discuss rule breaking strategies for multicultural women. What Rules is a production of Color Forward. The show is produced by me, Elisa Monjadas, with editing and fabulous sound design by Mathar Delion. Visit colorforward.com for more stories, events, and of course, all the episodes of What Rules. Medadi, I thought of you because I was riding my bike because now I'm like trying to have these 30 minutes of activity and it was really hard. (laughs) And I was like, I can do this. I can do this. And I thought of you. Listen, all jokes aside, if you need a cheerleader, you could come. I will cheer you for those 30 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) Me and my wings would be there too. (laughs) (laughs) I'll wear my tiara.